Hello, and today we're going to be working with ionic and covalent uh, compounds looking at the different properties. Uh, we'll be using six different compounds, uh, calcium chloride, sucrose, uh, paraffin wax, vegetable oil, sodium chloride, and magnesium sulfate we, uh, is what we'll be using, and we'll be looking at different properties. We'll be doing a water solubility test, uh, solution conductivity test, a melting point, uh, solid conductivity test and alcohol solubility. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so we're going to start by just measuring out one gram of each one of our uh, compounds we have. Uh, so we have uh, calcium chloride, sucrose, sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate, paraffin wax, and vegetable oil we'll be using today. Uh, so for each one we're just going to measure out one gram. Uh, so for each one, we just take and grab some of it with our scupula, and we got the square set to zero. Uh, we zeroed it out with our weight belt on it, and we just add it till we get to uh, 1.0 grams. So in this case, we're at 1.1, and that's going to be okay for this uh, lab we're doing today. I'm not going to show you. The step for each one, you've seen what they look like. Uh, once we have one gram, we'll take it over and then do our water solubility test. For our water solubility test, we're going to use uh, distilled water. Uh, we're going to put in 15 milliliters. We'll measure it out in a graduated cylinder. Uh, so we want to add it till we get to the 15 milliliter mark. Slow down there as we get close. Once we have our 15 milliliters, uh, again measuring at the meniscus, uh, we'll add that into a beaker. So we'll pour that into a beaker. And then we need to add in our, uh, in this case it's going to be calcium chloride. Uh, so we'll add in our calcium chloride. Once we add it in, we have a timer we're going to use to time how long it takes to dissolve. And we also have a stir rod to help us mix it in and stir it up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add it and then we'll start our timer and we'll start stirring it up and we'll speed up the video for you as we stir and mix it up and run the timer. So we'll go ahead and stop our timer now that it's fully dissolved. Uh, we're at 44 seconds it looks like 44.31 seconds for the calcium chloride uh, and now we'll repeat the process for other five for, for other five compounds uh, before we move on to our next uh, compound we're going to do our solution uh, conductivity test uh, we have this conductivity test here it's got a couple LED lights on top and on the back side it's got a key that shows us uh, what each indication means so if how bright the LED, the green, red one is, and the green one, and what that means for in terms of conductivity. So we'll go ahead and make sure it's turned on, and then just stick it in our solution that we created. You can see we got a bright red light and a dim green one. So if we look on the back, we can see a bright, very bright red, and a, a bright red and a dim green gives us a high conductivity. So high conductivity for our calcium chloride. Our uh, next uh, compound is going to be our uh, uh, sucrose. Uh, so we got 15 milliliters of water we just measured out. Uh, we got our sucrose, one gram we just weighed out, and we'll mix it in our water. So again, we'll fast forward as we try to dissolve it in our water. So for our sucrose, we're looking at about a 39 second, 39.47, so about 39 and a half seconds for it uh, to dissolve. So now that we have our sucrose solution, uh, we'll do our conductivity test. Uh, again, put our conductivity test in. Uh, you can see we got the red light comes on. Uh, it's not very bright. It's kind of faint, so it's, I'd say like a medium, and the green light does not come on at all. Uh, so if the green light's off and we got a medium, uh, that would be a medium or to even low conductivity. Uh, so it's not a great conductor. It does conduct a little bit, uh, but not a great conductor in this case. 
Uh, now we have our sodium chloride, so we add in uh, 15 milliliters of water. Uh, we have one gram of sodium chloride here. Uh, we'll pour it in, start our timer, and start mixing up. And we'll catch it once it all dissolves. So the sodium chloride was able to dissolve in about 22 and a half seconds, so 22.5L. Uh, now we'll do our conductivity test. Uh, make sure our conductivity test is turned on. We'll put it in, and we see a bright red, and our green ones lit up pretty well as well. Uh, so in that case, that's going to be a very high conductivity if we look on the back, very high. Uh, so that's sodium chloride. Uh, next, we'll move on to our next compound. So now we'll do our magnesium sulfate. Uh, we got our 15 milliliters of water measured out. Uh, we got our magnesium sulfate in our weight belt. We got our timer. We got to reset our timer. And we'll pour it in. And start our timer. And start mixing up. And we'll catch it once it's all dissolved. So for our magnesium sulfate, uh, we got it all dissolved and it looks like 46 seconds. So 46.06 seconds it came up with. Uh, now for our conductivity tester, uh, we'll make sure it's turned on and stick it in. Again, we got a bright red light and the green ones lit pretty well as well. So that's going to be another very high conductivity for us. Uh, next, we're going to test our paraffin wax. So we have our 15 milliliters of water. And then our 1.0 gram of paraffin wax. We'll start our timer. And start mixing it up. Uh, we've hit our three minute mark. And the time's still running. We've hit just passed over three minutes. And you can see it has not dissolved at all, so our paraffin is, wax is not going to dissolve in our water. Uh, so there's no need to do a conductivity test uh, since it's not a solution. Uh, so we don't really need to do that conductivity test. We could put it in and see what happens. Uh, but you can see we just get a, a pour or a low just from the water that's in there and some not having it fully cleaned out. But you can see it just... The green one's not lit at all, and the red one just lights up a little bit. Uh, so that's our conductivity test for our paraffin. So our last salability test is with our vegetable oil. Uh, so we have our vegetable oil uh, in this beaker since it's already in the liquid, and our 15 milliliters of water. So we'll put our 15 milliliters of water. Uh, we'll pour in our vegetable oil. <coughs> and then go ahead and start our timer. You can see uh, that vegetable oil currently is sitting on top of the water. Uh, we can stir it up and see if it will mix. Uh, so our time's up and we, if we look closely, you can pretty clearly see that oil is still sitting on top of our water, uh, so it has not dissolved. So once again, we don't need to do that conductivity test. Uh, we could turn it on and actually do the test, but we don't need to do that conductivity test. Uh, but if we were to put it in, you can see lights up just very, very dim red, low conductor. If we look on the back, that's a sign of a low conductor, so it's not a good conductor. Uh, so that's it for water solubility and solution conductivity tests. Next, we'll move on to our melting point. Uh, for melting point, we're just going to take our aluminum foil and set it on our scale. Uh, set it to zero. Uh, we'll fold it up a little bit so it can hold and contain our compound. And first one is just going to be calcium chloride. So we add in one gram again. We got one gram of calcium chloride and we take it over to our hot plate where we will test the melting point. So we have our hot plate set to a medium setting uh, right around the five and a half to six. Uh, and we're just gonna place our calcium chloride uh, that we get just weighed out on our hot plate. And we'll let it sit there and we'll time up to three minutes and time how long it takes to start to melt. And if it doesn't melt, uh, we'll just write down that there's no melting point. So after three minutes, we have not had any real melting with our calcium chloride. 
Uh, so we'll go ahead and take it off our hot plate and move on to our next compound. Our next compound is sucrose. So we got 1.0 grams of sucrose. Put it on so you can see it. And we'll put that on the hot plate and wait for it to start melting or three minutes to pass. So at about one minute in, the uh, time I stopped at 101, you can see it's starting to melt and uh, caramelize our uh, sucrose. Uh, so you have that melting point uh, on our data table. We're going to record 101 as our uh, time that it started to melt. So we'll take that one off and move on to our next one. Our next compound is sodium chloride. I'll turn it around so hopefully we can see a little better. Uh, sodium chloride. So after three minutes we've noticed no uh, real noticeable change, it hasn't started melting with our sodium chloride, so we'll move on to our next compound. Our next solid we're setting on is magnesium sulfate, uh, so we'll give that time to heat up and see whether it melts or if we have to wait the full three minutes. So it's been our three minutes and you can see we still have our full uh, magnesium sulfate. Uh, it was hydrated at the beginning so you may have noticed some water boiling out but that was not any melting taking place. Uh, so that was our magnesium sulfate. Our final item is our paraffin wax. So we'll go ahead and set our paraffin wax on our hot plate and wait for it to either melt or three minutes to pass. So if you look closely, you can see our wax is slowly starting to disappear and you can see as it melts uh, liquid forming and we're left with just uh, that wax residue behind. Uh, our big chunk is about all that's left in there. Uh, I stopped my timer at 18.46 seconds, uh, probably started melt melting even before that. So that was our paraffin wax. Uh, next we'll do our conductivity test for each one of the solids. Uh, this is a pretty simple test. We take our conductivity tester and step, stick it on a chunks of the solid. Uh, with our calcium chloride, we can see as we touch it, our red one just faintly starts to light up. I uh, mean it's very, very low conductivity. Uh, we'll move on to our next one, which is our sucrose. Uh, no light will come on at any point, so we got no conductivity in our sucrose. I'll move the calcium chloride out of our way and we'll move our sodium chloride up and we'll touch our sodium chloride. Once again, none of the lights are coming on so we have no conductivity for our sodium chloride. We'll clean it off and move on to our magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate. Once again, no lights coming on so no conductivity for our magnesium sulfate. And our last one is our paraffin wax. A paraffin wax with a big chunk and we'll see no lights come on once again so no conductivity for that one as well. Uh, so that was our solid conductivity test. So our final test is going to use isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I've already measured out 15 milliliters. We'll pour that into our beaker and then add in first case is going to be our calcium chloride. So we'll add that calcium chloride all in and again we'll, just like the water salubility test uh, we're looking for all the dissolved. So I've started my started my timer, and we're just waiting to time how long it takes to hopefully dissolve. So our time has passed. Uh, we can see that our uh, calcium chloride still there has not dissolved in that alcohol. So we'll say that one does not dissolve in isopropyl alcohol. Our next test is our sucrose. Uh, so we'll do our sucrose in isopropyl alcohol. We've already measured out 15 milliliters. Put that in our graduated, from our graduated cylinder into our beaker. Take our sucrose, pour it in from our weigh boat into our beaker, and then start stirring. And make sure we start our timer. And start stirring, and time how long it takes. So uh, three minutes ran out and we still have plenty of our sucrose uh, still there in our alcohol so it did not dissolve in this case. So you're going to put down did not dissolve. 
Uh, so next we have our sodium chloride uh, and our alcohol. We've already measured out the alcohol, so we'll pour that in. Uh, so our timer is reset and pour in our sodium chloride. Again, we'll give it up to three minutes. So we'll time it and we'll catch you after we're done mixing it. So our three minutes have passed. You can once again see that we still have plenty of our, in this case, sodium chloride uh, remaining in our alcohol. So again, it did not dissolve. So sodium chloride did not dissolve within that three minute time frame. Uh, and now we'll move on to the next one. Our next item is our magnesium sulfate. Uh, we're adding our 15 milliliters of alcohol. We've already measured out. And our one gram of magnesium sulfate. And again, stir it in and give it three minutes of mixing. And if it dissolves, we'll stop our timer. And if it doesn't, wood right down does not dissolve. So it's been three minutes. Uh, if we look back, uh, we can see we still have plenty of our magnesium sulfate still in here. Uh, so the magnesium sulfate did not dissolve in our, our alcohol. Uh, now we're to do our paraffin wax in the alcohol. So we're adding our 15 milliliters of alcohol, uh, 1.0 grams of paraffin wax. And again, give up to three minutes. We'll start our timer. Give up to three minutes to dissolve. And we'll catch you after the time's up or once it starts to dissolve. Uh, so our three minutes has passed. Uh, you can see if you look in here, we still have some of that paraffin wax, so it has not dissolved in our alcohol either. Uh, so it does not dissolve for our paraffin wax. And our last test is our vegetable oil. Uh, I'm not going to weigh out one gram just because it's going to be hard to see one gram. Uh, so we have our alcohol, and I'll just pour in a small amount, but enough that we can see, kind of see what's going on with the oil. Uh, so we got our oil in there, we got the alcohol, and we'll tr start trying to mix it up and see if we can't see two layers or if it's all mixed together after uh, time has passed. Uh, so I added enough oil in so we can hopefully clearly see. Uh, we have two clear layers here on the top. We have that clear alcohol layer, and on the bottom you see it's kind of a bubbly looking appearance in our vegetable oil now. So we have two layers. Uh, hopefully it's pretty clear in this video and maybe a little harder to see but we have two clear layers there uh, so we have that separation between those two so they did not that oil did not dissolve in our alcohol uh, so hopefully you saw today uh, we had some covalent and some ionic compounds uh, ionic compounds tend to dissolve in water easily uh, tend to be very conductive of electricity and tend to have high numbers. Whereas our covalent compounds should have had uh, been less soluble in water. They still could dissolve in water, but be less soluble in water. Uh, they're going to have lower melting points and not be nearly as good of conductors of electricity. Uh, so that's what we're looking for in this lab. Hopefully you notice the trends and can help you identify uh, ionic and covalent properties. Thank you. Have a great day.